Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Absolute pleasure to be talking to all of you. Uh, let me start. I think uh, you know this topic: customer-centric innovation and technology as a catalyst for personalized experiences. When uh, I was told that well, there's going to be a panel discussion on this topic, I was very happy with this because you know in my experiences, BA as uh, CIOs and CTOs, our primary focus has been on the back end. We've always been focused on making sure that the CEO and the CFO get the reports on time, the data is absolutely correct and uh, you know available to the right people. So I think that is something that has been for many, many years our focus and we've become real experts at it. So we make sure that the business works very efficiently, very uh, technology driven, uh, everything at the back end is so efficient. Now is the time where I see more and more focus towards the customer and uh yes we of course supported the sales guys in terms of our crm system and you know making all the sales reports available and all that but i personally think that was still a back end activity now i'm very happy to see there's so much of focus towards what experience a customer gets right and that's becoming more and more relevant more and more important for business uh, because i think ultimately the business uh, benefit is in making sure that the customer is happy and the customer comes back again and again. That's so true. with that focus, I think all of us now today realize that we need to also focus on the experience of the customer. So, and we are now leveraging technology more and more towards making sure that the customer experience is out of the world. So with that uh, as, as a start for the discussion, what I would like to do is I would request each one of you um, though I know a couple of you, yes, I've met you earlier and it's very happy to be in touch again. But what I would request is if you could give a short introduction, don't make it too long, but just explaining your profile, your current uh, role and the business your company is and very briefly as to your previous uh, work experience also. So let us start with uh, Bupendra. You're on the left of my screen. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Namaskar all. Uh, thank you, Pazuji, for probably. Uh, to invite on this platform, and that's a very prestigious tech plus uh, media platform. Uh, myself, Bhupendra Solanki, I'm working for Sakura World Hospital as a CIO. Yes, as you rightly said, uh, these days uh, we have to work in customer centric instead of the uh, uh, more focus on the back uh, uh, back office works. So that way we are working towards like our customer is patient. So we are understanding the need of patient and try to incorporate uh, to reach with the patient uh, with the help of technology. So maybe briefly, how long have you been here and where were you before this drone? Yeah, in Zakra, in this four year, uh, more than four year and before that, uh, this uh, Mumbai Eco Club and Hospital. So uh, more than two years indicate uh, I have experience in IT field for the healthcare. Great, great. Uh, Balvinder, coming to you. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, sir, thanks to all. I'm, I mean, um, I'm very much privileged that I'm being called in, in this uh, discussion. And uh, related to my profile, uh, uh, my name is Balvinder Singh Banga and uh, almost 24 years of IT experience and recently I am no, I involved in, uh, recently I am involved in a dual role. So I am a CIO for the Redco as well as a managing director of the Truxup. So uh, Truxup is the aggregator platform which is actually a, uh, another subsidiary of the Redco only. So now I'm having a, both the flavors if I talk about no, uh, because logistic industry is most critical industry. So if we talk about my customer are not very educated one. They are the truck drivers, they are the brokers, and handling them is a different ball game altogether, which we will be you know, talking during our discussion. And you will really you know, there will be key learnings, I'm, I'm sure, with from everyone, but uh, there will be a definitely a new type of experience, which I will like to share during our discussion. And uh, that is more customer oriented and most customer centric uh, based on today's discussion. And uh, maybe, uh, no, some good ideas may also be coming out from the each chair, I would say, would have going to help me as well. So this is in brief about me, sir. Great, Balvinder, right. And uh, so, um, uh, Anand, what about you? So, good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be on this platform. Thank you, Tech Plus. And uh, on behalf of Arjas Deep, I'm happy to be here and share our experiences. So, Arjas Deep predominantly is into manufacturing of alloy steel. We are purely a B2B company. We are a made-to-order company. And this is my 12th year as a group CIO for this company. And uh, I'm responsible both for CIO, digital transformation, and also the CISO part. 
Prior to this, I used to work for Henkel, which is a German company. I spent uh, nearly a decade as a group IT head for India and Pakistan. And uh, prior to that, I used to work for an Indian company called Billmet Limited. I was there for a good eight long years. So totally, this is my 33rd year in IT industry uh, as an IT leadership role. And uh, very proud and happy to be here with the same enthusiasm and zeal to share whatever our learning and to take away uh, valuable input from my fellow peer. Great. That's very nice. So I think we've got a uh, very well experienced uh, team here. And uh, as a quick introduction, well, I have been a CIO for about uh, 24 years uh, before I retired from Ernst Young uh, as the CIO for the India practice, Middle East and Africa. I was there for about 12 years. Uh, before that, with Hughes Software Systems, HCL Info Systems, and uh, Delhi Stock Exchange. And I started my career in the Navy. I uh, served for 20 years in the Indian Navy and took premature retirement as a commander. So I retired after a total of 44 years of uh, active ex uh, work experience. So nice to know you. And I think uh, my request is please keep this interactive. Whenever you feel that you want to interrupt me or interrupt any of the other speakers, please do so politely. I, uh, I would welcome a healthy debate rather than just a question or answer session. But to start with it, uh, again, let me start with Babendra again. Can you please share some uh, solutions which are providing personalized uh, experience to the customer, uh, which are technology driven, and we talk talk about innovation in this field. So, I would like to start with you if you can talk about some experience that you have had in this in this area. Yeah, as I said uh, earlier, like uh, I'm from healthcare background and uh, IT working for healthcare, so our customer is patient. So. Uh, before COVID, uh, like most of the hospital uh, working on the internal processes, as you uh, mentioned uh, in your introduction, like IT working for the C, uh, MD or, or CFO or, or internal processes uh, rather than the uh, customer centric uh, things uh, more on that side. But uh, post COVID or during the COVID, uh, COVID change the scenario and then everybody is thinking how we can reach the customer without calling them to on site and uh, uh, touch less transactions and uh, many uh, parameters are involved same applies for the healthcare as well even healthcare is more sensitive like infection rate is uh, more if uh, uh, human touch uh, to each other so what we realized uh, we we uh, sat with the our front office team and uh, management and then interact with the patient as well uh, sometimes they are coming to collect the report only then we thought can we automate the repo uh, report to the patient then then that we done and then later uh, like bills uh, can we automate appointment booking we can give their hand otherwise they have to come to hospital or they have to call our call center number and then call center people are booking and that is without payment so what we thought with the help of technology we can allow them to book the appointment uh, and uh, book some uh, few services uh, from their um, home or their handset their laptop desktop and uh, we can serve so we started our home care practice with the help of technology. So whatever booking coming to home care, home care, going there and serving the patient. So during the COVID pandemic, uh, we serve a lot of our community uh, uh, with the help of technology. I'm, and now I'm coming to like, uh, there are two parts, always technology. One is for internal processes, one for customer centric. So customer centric things also involve the uh, mode of channels. Like few people uh, want to serve, few people want to call, few people want to have a silent transaction. So what we did, we enabled WhatsApp also for the silent transactions. Like report getting posted, if they want to interact, they can take the uh, appointment and uh, many other things which we enabled through WhatsApp. Uh, even other channel also, omni channel like uh, Facebook, Instagram and uh, call center always available. Website through the website, they can book and uh, uh, mobile app also we started where they can record their symptoms whenever they are coming to hospital they then doctor treating doctor can see those symptoms and then advise accordingly so no need to explain in front of doctor or, or sometimes patient is scratching their head okay when last the stomach ache or, or headache happened so whenever it's happened at your home you can record in sakra mobile app and then doctor can see so this way in many area we worked still we are working because technology is a journey it is not like one time achievement and we achieved and it is over so that way we are still working and hopefully we'll come with the uh, better solutions uh, to serve our patient without uh, 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 this uh, compromising the quality of care right very interesting so uh, Anand, I mean, you said you're a pure B2B uh, company. So, how does this, uh, you know, work uh, in a B2B environment? And if you can give some specific examples where 
you know, from a customer centric perspective, uh, that technology really that you leveraged in your company to uh, provide a better service. So, first of all, I think you'll have to explain what a customer is in your case. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Sachi. Uh, as I mentioned, we manufacture alloy steel. So, uh, uh, 60 to 70% of our customers are automobile companies, like we did, you name it, anything, be it Mahindra or Yoda or Tata or anyone. So, they use our specialized steel. Now, uh, so our journey starts from the point when a specific application is identified in an automobile. It could be a car or it could be a commercial vehicle or it could be a as much as a defense or a tank or even something like that. So once a, a particular application is identified, we start, the product is called TAS, you know, we call it a technical uh, acceptance uh, specification where customer specifications are captured. And then the whole journey of the uh, conversion from an order to a delivery is all around that. So uh, unlike uh, you know, our friend Bupendra's uh, customer, where it's a retail, it's completely patient driven and it's more complex, whereas here, our customers are limited and uh, we have a video man that is a forger who buys our steel and uh, converts the steel into a specific application and gives it to the customer, which is the automobile company. So what's important for us is two things, proactive and reactive. So when we talk of proactive, what is the, the touch point? The touch point is a customer need to know what are the grades available so he can plan better in terms of his logistics just in time because most of the automobile company would like the material to be there only at the time when they really need it. Otherwise, it will be a big logistic issue for the customer. So, the, so that is one area where we help our customers to know what are the materials, where is it, at the which, what production state it is, which is a directly interface to our MRP module as well as our NVS module. So that customer is aware that this much hot metal is made. This is where this is so much grade is being rolled. For example, a customer could have many multiple grades that they are buying from us. So they need to know which grade is what stage for them to have better planning of the entire end to end cycle. The next part is the reactive, where customer has a complaint. The complaint, you know, in case of automobile, we need to maintain eight to ten years of data as per the statutory requirement, as well as from the various association and statutory uh, automobile industry requirement. So, if there is a complaint, then there is a huge amount of, uh, uh, you know, a kind of postmortem to be done. Which grade it was? What were the metallurgical property? What were the job needs? How did it go? Whether there's also some amount of forgery and uh, misinformation that happens. So what we, our test certificates are elaborating on nearly 500 parameters. It's like making a very elaborate meal with 500 ingredients. So uh, the reactive part is to ensure that the customer gets his response in terms of complaint, addressing his complaint, whether it was a problem in the metallurgy or whether it was a problem in the logistic or was the, the application not rightly fit for that particular thing. And that whole life cycle of a complaint has to be well managed and reproduced at time. So these are the key points from a customer perspective to know what materials we have, what is the kind of prevailing price with keeping in mind that we are MTO company. So it's not going to be a, a list price. It's purely demand and supply based pricing. Also grain based pricing. Also the various other scenarios like, you know, the market is completely driven by iron ore and core prices. So we have to balance that and also ensure that customer is aware in terms of what is the trend of the market and so on and so forth. So these two aspects are one, I would say one shell. The next shell, which is very important for us, where we do really a value addition, is to be part, we will partner with the customer to understand what is their plan, what is the plan for the next five years, where are they want to, what are new products they want to invent or they want to launch, and then we accordingly associate ourselves and build that kind of a capacity and and keep them in the whole uh, integrated view of this is where we are heading towards, this is what your plan is, how we are expanding our, our product or uh, uh, product differentiation and how we are adding to our product uh, catalog. And that way the customer has a lot of confidence in terms of uh, uh, the, the kind of partnership that we do, in terms of how we want to see that customer delight is one of our main agenda. Instead, uh, also how we focus on excellence. Like, well, you know, a lot of newsletters are shared to customers in terms of what are our new innovation, new product advancement, new technology that we adopted. From IT perspective, we are constantly harping on the fact that we are a digital steel company. And we keep implementing a lot of innovative solutions from predictive maintenance. Like for example, customer would like to know how sure is that that their line doesn't stop. So when we implement a solution like predictive maintenance in a factory, which can predict any machine from going or uh, anomaly being detected in advance, that actually builds a lot of confidence in customer. Similarly, we have a complete end-to-end -end cycle right from the time a hot metal is casted into a billet. We do a barcoding of billet and then it gets rolled and then it gets uh, inspected and finishing line. and. Right from that level till the uh, time that bar reaches to a customer, there's even a small cross-sectional sticker that we put. So those kind of 
integrity in terms of technology in terms of spectral analysis even our uh, another aspect which customers are very happy is the ARL reader what the spectral reader ratings are automatically captured using machine learning machine learning and sent into the system so there is no human intervention for any kind of modification so we keep doing such innovative things uh, to impress and to create a lot of confidence in our B2B customers and to uh, kind of make a feel make them feel and assure them that they are with the best of the best company and their products our products are not just technically strong but also digitally strong Great. I mean, really good that you gave very specific examples and, uh, you know, not being from that industry, it becomes uh, very clear, at least to me, uh, to understand what you're talking about and how, uh, you know, you're, you're able to sort of integrate with the customer and, and their um, concerns and their objectives. Yes. So, uh, but I mean, I wonder, do you also uh, talk about, you know, first of all, your customers and what their concerns are and how you use the technology uh, to innovate and and to make the customer more happy. Okay, so uh, what type of a customer do you have? I mean, first I would like to explain you. Um, we do have a very sophisticated customer. I mean, if we talk about, I mean, there are different elements which sits in between. So, and every you know any logistic company if have to have to take care all the uh, all the areas they have to take. Uh, you know, all the corners they have to see it. If we talk about one of my corner is about let's take another example is PSU maybe Indian oil. So this is one of my corner. They have their different mindset, you know that they work accordingly. Second comes as one of uh, a critical component that is a broker. And third is a uh, components comes as you no know, vehicle owner. And fourth components comes as actual driver. So in any of, if we talk about any of the component, they all are my customer. Now what happens? The biggest problem in the logistic industry is about the transparency. So even, I mean, no, um, uh, um, no, Mr. Anand is here, who is from the manufacturing unit, I'm sure he is also facing the same problem. So transparency is, n when I talk about the logistic industry transparency, it is not known to anyone. Even broker only knows what exactly, you know, at what cost or at what price they are deploying the vehicle. And even the vehicle owner doesn't know what exactly is happening around their vehicle. Driver doesn't know what is the contract between the vehicle owner as well as the contract between the customer. So all are all are in mess in total, if I talk about, or maybe no one wants to tell any information. So what we brought, we brought a in middle system, which gives a transparency to all. So it is a transparent, very much transparent to the our uh, PSU customers. It is transparent to our uh, vehicle owner brokers as well as to the driver so they know very well exactly you know what type of a amount the contract has been finalized how much amount i will be getting what is the you know um, uh, movement cost what will be the diesel which is going to you know what is the amount of the diesel they will be getting it and everything being taken care with the technology and platform we we are right now we are using a whatsapp for our integrations and for our information passing to all our customers and for our psus we do have our you no know, uh, self portal, self service portal, which is there, which is they can go and see their entire information, which is available. Then we do have the dashboards analytics, which is talking about no, uh, okay, uh, they are talking about also no, uh, what exactly uh, is the freight amount which is supposed to come out at the larger or the lower level. Let's take another one example like you want to send your material to some new location, maybe to the Nepal location, maybe to Bhutan, and you don't know exactly what exactly the freight going to, and you have to sign a one contract. And as a business, as a business owner, you cannot do that. You don't have the information. So the freight analytics is going to tell you about, okay, this would be the tentative cost and the material cost, what I am transferring there. And you can know, then you can able to do that contract very easily. I mean, that type of, because logistic, especially the transportation industry is unorganized industry, at least right now in India. So people doesn't know all about, so they need to understand if I have to sign one contract or if I have to, uh, no uh, long term rebuilt a relation with uh, some other company what would be my quotation how i have to see next one year how it has to move what are the fuel prices and what is happening to that what is going to happen next year i mean people people talks about okay we are touching now 100 rupee 100 inr in most of the states in india okay that's fine what about another six months down the line so how this data and the power of no data we are we are driving the entire freight management complete ai based based on all these information and that we have to we took around in almost one year approximately one year to drive only on the freight management system that how my freight analysis in a future for any customer will work i mean and it gives you and next year if your production is x 
and your volume is by how much is you know you required a material you required a uh, movement you required a vehicle you required a cost everything with it can show you immediately on 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 a just click of a button and these type of a transparency is going to enhance my customer experience and that's what we are doing it right now great very very interesting uh, so welcome uh, dharmendra uh, dharmendra right no i'm armin yeah welcome and uh, we've just gone through uh, some part of our discussions we missed you in the beginning uh, so what i would request is if you can uh, introduce yourself uh, very briefly your profile the current role what does your company do and what is your total work experience where have you worked earlier uh, very briefly if you can uh, tell us something about yourself uh, sure so hello everyone um, i am dharmendra kumar a uh, cio for we cool foods and products i carrying uh, 25 plus years of experience of my professionals and technology and uh, the business transformation with the various business type tycoons right tata birla tvs and uh, tvs uh, this includes a strong skill set which i have developed through my work experience and academic i am well versed in erp implementations uh, information security and uh, it infrastructures why or uh, having proficiency in data analytics artificial intelligence uh, the app building uh, with a great eye of details i have contributed uh, significantly to the large projects collaborative efforts and achievements to my leadership collaboration and communications ability or uh, in a short uh, i am almost worked with uh, most of the business processes existing in the business world great very nice and what does the company do uh, make cool Yeah, we are into agri tech field. We are in. Ah, uh, we connect farm to board, so handling the entire supply chain in between. Okay, okay. So, um, Tamendra, could you also give some examples of uh, you know when your organization uh, has uh, leveraged technology to create you know personalized experiences, some successful examples or uh, for your customers? So, first of all, uh, who is your customer? How do you interact with them? and how has technology been used uh, to make uh, the customer experience better yeah you know we are in food technology and uh, uh, actually connecting the farmers to the need customers right handling entire supply chain uh, which actually requires lack of lot of this manual uh, involvement manual processes and a uh, lot of mile to actually uh, travel it to this right and we have actually Uh, touch each and every part through technology. A lot of uh, our uh, competitors are in market. Uh, we have the competitors sitting uh, beside roads. Also, we have the competitors who are actually doing business in air conditions. Also, right. But uh, we actually define our business differently, right? And uh, that is why uh, we are different from others. And uh, we have deployed the technology to leverage each and every ability of our uh, output into. Uh, the business outcome right uh, as you know the customers expect the companies to understand uh, their, their unique taste and preference and engage them as individuals rather than the customer type or segments a personalized customer experience makes this possible by delivering the uh, tailored messaging offers and the products to each person right uh, if you um, look at the mckinsey uh, forecast almost the 71% of customers expect the business to deliver personalized interactions and 75% of them are uh, become frustrated when this does not happen this covid 19 uh, accelerated this trend and putting the customer loyalty up for grab uh, three quarters of consumers switched to a new store product or buying method during the pandemic because of lack of technological implementation right to make our service as stand out or uh, take a customer centric approach the cu uh, customer service has to be more than fast and friendly it has to be relevant responsive to customers unique preferences and one way to accomplish this is by offering the omni channel support that engages the customers via their channel of choice right we develop a self service experience in the service environment that now defines by the speed and convenience self service reduces the frustration by allowing customer to find the answer they need quickly and easily suitable material for the self service portal include faqs explainer videos and a step by step solution for common problems 
The second one is that gathering the regular feedback and evaluation services. Someone listening and hearing their voice, accepting to the demand and request. So that is a very, very uh, uh, unique services which we have implemented inside our uh, marketing division and the sales division, wherein we are gathering the information, we are uh, collecting the feedbacks, we are uh, evaluating all of them and we are responding to them, right? And uh, making the uh, customers feel that somebody is actually accepting their demand and request and also listen, listening their voice. Uh, we also empowered our sales and services representative with a strong CRM tool and which actually helping them to consolidate and act quickly, outgrow and benchmarking tools are the example for connecting our backend customer, right? Uh, especially the farmer, uh, wherein we are actually uh, providing them uh, the farm management, the, uh, the pricing, which how their product can be sold around their locality, what is the price going on for their commodity, right? And also uh, the providing them about the crop cycle, the crop growth, the irrigation time, and also providing that the information where they will get uh, the good and the cheaper seed and the fertilizers, right? When coming to our uh, operation of people, uh, we have done uh, for uh, our auto allocations and uh, uh, the uh, auto allocation, auto inviting and auto outvoiding, right? Based on the uh, customer order itself. So the system actually pick up the order from the ERP and the robot actually doing the entire work of um, inviting and allocating based on the customer uh, uh, requirement, right? Apart from that, we have implemented the fleet management, right? With the vehicle tracking management, wherein we are tracking that, okay, how uh, our uh, field delivery actually happening and what will be the biggest route, what will be the corrections if there will be uh, the overhaul of your traffic and other things. If the customer returns comes, then how accurately we address that one? Because as you know that, okay, we are uh, uh, dealing with the highly perishable products also. We have dairy, we have... Uh, the fresh produce, which are actually not been uh, kept as it is for a long time, right? So delivery at right time and uh, 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 right place is very, very important for us, right? And so I think we'll come back to you. It's very interesting to hear so much of technology being used in agri-tech and, uh, you know, in this field, which was always, you know, uh, mentally one would not connect to technology with this in the past. Uh, but I want to come... Uh, now to Bupendra, you know, especially in the field of uh, hospitals and medical, you know, there are a lot of challenges, and especially in terms of privacy, customer data privacy. Now, obviously, when you're making a customer-centric technology solution, you need data. Now, all these privacy issues which come in, and therefore security, data security, what are these challenges that you faced, and if so, how did you handle that? And, uh, you know, that that's something which I've always wondered how you manage that in, in such large uh, hospital data databases? Yeah, it's uh, always a challenge to maintain the security and privacy of the patient uh, critical data uh, because it's a legal compliance also. <clears throat> so we divided the security into uh, aspect, like one is internal. So internal customer, we review the, their access, role-based access we given, and then we review the every quarterly uh, their access rights. And if we talk about external, so external, whatever uh, things we are going to expose, uh, we do the uh, VAPT for uh, those applications and then uh, done the testing on time to time, like uh, annually, as well as if new application implemented, then uh, we uh, do the then and there, uh, that uh, security check. So uh, even still uh, a few hospital in India also got uh, attacked by the ransomware and some other things. And then the data is, um, uh, is public. Uh, so, uh, in that segment, cyber security uh, plays a major role and um, we are also working to hardening or tightening our security parameter in terms of external security and uh, as well as internal security. But that is the biggest challenge. Even now, this uh, ABHA also coming on uh, this uh, government initiative. So, in that also, we raise the question like when uh, patient data is going to put on common uh, uh, bucket and then, then who will be uh, take care or uh, who is going to take the responsibility of uh, patients' data and uh, their privacy. So that also is still like question mark. But yes, as you rightly said, it's the biggest challenge uh, for the hospitals or as a CIO to control uh, the or, or take the measure for the security and privacy of data, uh, patients' data. Right. So are these similar issues being faced uh, in, in your business? Sure, it is very important. And uh, cyber security posture of a manufacturing company 
it is a critical factor how well your cyber security procedures practices and your resilience is so uh, that means a lot of confidence in the customer because uh, you know most of the automobile companies if they are going to depend on our product and uh, they will be running it will be a billions and crores of rupees loss if they are pushed down because our product did not reach them on time so uh, we have been always championing this part right from last 10 12 years we have been investing heavily on security we have uh, a lot of intrusion prevention systems we have been one of the early palo alto customers we have been implementing a hyper converged infrastructure where the so all this uh, investments all this tactical maneuvers over the last 10 12 years have paid you know they paid off well in 2021 we had a ransomware attack and that is where all your talks and all your stories have to really act so within two days we were back to business business as usual no customer was impacted no dispatches were affected no data was lost no customer data was lost no ransom was paid and we had the highest sale in the month of august 2021 so that shows that we were uh, our strategies our vision for cyber resilience uh, played a very good role and especially with companies you know we have a lot of japanese companies european companies automobile companies who are buying our product so that uh, it stands that particular incident was actually you know we capitalized on it from being a uh, weak vulnerable and protected vis-a-vis to being resilient and we could thwart a global a uh, global kind of you know ransomware attack the same ransomware block file which crippled many of the american companies we were able to thwart it with any with zero loss and zero ransom payment so in addition to that we also had to work in various other manners to digitally uh, ensure the data is safe or we are actually working on being we were we trying to work how to digitally make a test certificate so that it goes directly from our spectrometer to the customer so no one can manipulate that and there's no uh, alteration and uh, yes those are some of the practices that happen at the Um, in the market and we are also working on we already have a very good robust dcp uh, be it the business continuity band a good dr so in case of the primary thing fails we have a hot dr uh, at a different site where the transition will happen using hyper converged snapshots so any application any innovation any new thinking that we do security is part and parcel of this whole ecosystem right that's right and uh, balvinda see i'm talking of challenges that you face now one of the uh, challenges which immediately came to my mind was data security or data privacy but you know when you're talking of customer centric technology innovation then obviously you need data which is the customer's data now okay. customer's data whether it is b2b or b2c is always sensitive and uh, confidentiality has to be maintained so you know how it, that is one aspect i mean data security or privacy but any other challenges that you faced or anything that you would like to talk about yes absolutely uh, i initially in the initial discussion i told you that our users are not that educated one so no the biggest problems comes at uh, most of the systems we have migrated on the otp if we talk about and uh, no getting and taking the otp or taking a confirmation of otp what your otp number from the driver is next to impossible it is not that easy even not from even even no I, even from the educated brokers educated who are i would say i mean they may be the graduate also but still they do not provide otp even after looking at okay that message is coming from the trucks up and no the message is coming from the ritco logistics and they do not provide the otp because hamara bank khali kar lenge they have the one standard word <laughs> without understanding it actually so i strongly uh, i mean no we have to keep trained up people and we are sending and circulating so many messages to them and so many you know articles to them and in our when our team goes to ground they are also sending the proper messages we have a complete template available uh, no i can show you that's written in the hindi as well it's just like this it's not visible right now let me share one example here it's uh maybe i will try uh to unblur this you can see this yeah. i mean i can share after this call as well with everyone and these beautiful templates has given about you know talking about the problems of the you know brokers the problems of each card is specific to them and how they have to and the second page is talking about the solution of that problem that what is the problem and second page is what is the solution of that problem so so what we have done it in our on our ground and on our apps what we decided we had taking a minimal data what is required second if aadhar card authentication is required we only take the authentication information like this is authenticated verified in our system so we do not click aadhar card or keep the pictures with us earlier we used to do that but now we have stopped using it we have we have stopped that practicing now even if in in some of the cases like you no know, when we have to go for the insurance when we have uh, you no know, give them the uh, uh, um, fast tag and all that we have to collect that data as well and in that case we are trying to keep that on our secure s3 box no especially on amazon we are we have taken that so that and 
proper we have kept it uh, so many layers of the security to ensure that one should not it should not be visible or it should not be available to everyone along with that no um, uh, along with that we are trying to build whatever the data collection compliance is i mean data security compliance is inside our you know system can be done so that we are catering them we are ensuring them that they should not go beyond this uh, they should not uh, no there should not be any leakage of the data or information though i mean no you know that security uh, cannot be 100% it cannot be you no know, full proof it can be a full proof so tomorrow you may come up with some new new thing and probably we have to again solutionize that thing that's keep going it's keep going on so those regulation compliances we are trying to deploy on a regular basis and we are conducting a wrap which is as a one of uh, best practice we are following that every 3 months or 4 months down the line the wrap have to keep going and see that what are the challenges there if any loopholes is there so that we can close them we can work work upon that so these are the basic practices we are following and uh, second internal our internal uh, user control mechanism we are not allowing all the user to see all the data it's very uh, no role based driven if branch user what they can see and what support user can see i mean these information we are you no know, very much particular about that so that no information there should not be any way that information can be moved out or can be leaked upon and so that no it can be used uh, it can be misused so these are the uh, one common practices which we are uh, following in across our organization it take it took time for us also to you know to come up with so many um, so many uh, so many software so many uh, implementation so many uh, technology to deploy and to see that i mean at a longer run we sometime we found that it failed sometime we found that okay this starts working perfectly so we keep on changing ourselves accordingly and we keep on changing in a system we keep on bringing all that alignment yeah i know it is to deal with the as you mentioned drivers and darmeda had spoken about uh, farmers you know i remember in 1995 i had joined delhi stock exchange and we were implementing the online trading system and we were dealing with uh, brokers you know these uh, stock brokers who used to trade in uh, those uh, trading rings at the very crude people very difficult to make them use a computer at that time i'm talking of 1995 uh, delhi stock exchange was the third stock exchange to go online at that time so i can totally understand that these sort of difficulties that we faced of course at that time security was not a big challenge we did have security of viruses and uh, hacking and ransom uh, so uh, coming back to you uh, devender uh, would you also talk about uh, you know some of the major challenges and i think we're running out of time so we'll uh, also come to the last question if you can talk of some uh, latest technology new technology that is or the emerging technology that are coming that you can foresee will help you and your current solutions that you have and uh, again i think we just have about another 5 7 minutes left so we we'll, uh, we'll be briefed all of our space so security is such a topic which is associated with each and every business whether it is a small medium or big or whatever may be right we also have many security challenges right because we are actually working with a uh, different different class of people right some of them are uh, very very illiterate people some of them are the literate people some of them are knowledgeable about the information technology some of them does not know anything about that right and basically when you are dealing with the farmers and all it is very very complicated for you to manage them right so we have built up lot of things uh, around our business uh, uh, what do you say uh, cloud wherein uh, we have deployed uh, the network security like we are using meraki at this point of time we have uh deployed 24 gears for our mobility solutions wherein we can actually ensure our hand handled devices the uh, mobility devices are secured and other things right we are using in zero trust we are using manage engine for our uh, monitoring the entire traffic and the data which is actually moving in and out of our uh, networks right so this is actually the security uh, uh solutions we have built around to ensure that we are secured from uh, others or the hackers and attackers right now coming to the technology part which you talked about uh see a lot of technology we already deployed into our system otherwise it was very difficult to manage the profitability into this business right but if you talk about, talk to me personally i would like to focus on uh, the artificial intelligence and machine learning wherein which is actually uh, wherein we can build up the better decision support system faster and more reliable right connecting the dots to a meaningful figure right wherein you can 
take the decision on time, take the decisions accurately, right? Then I can talk about the IOTs wherein we can use the sensor to carrying out the information to a uh, remote, uh, which is possible in a very fraction of time and <laughs> with the speed what we are actually looking at. Blockchain technology also, which is very, very uh, new to the world and which can be actually bring to the business for encrypting your personalized and confidential information from uh, threats and uh, storing uh, covered in a remarkable uh, in a remarkable option with the technology available for us right uh now introducing to the 5g and advanced connectivity it is also possible that okay you can share a chunk of data uh across the globe in a very fraction uh, time and the accessible a huge amount of information in a nanoseconds right <coughs> which is also a revolutionary uh, work coming to the process industry the robotic and automation which is actually very very emerging into uh, the tech world now and uh, reducing your manpower bringing accuracy with this technology and reshaping the high manual operation business and uh, increasing their throughput is possible through this so this is also the very very uh, what do you say a hot cake to actually implement and get the benefit out of that great great so anand what about you i mean concluding uh, comments and especially in terms of emerging technologies and how uh, you know, if you're looking forward to some technology and how it can support you in a customer-centric innovation focus. So what we uh, do, Rajiv, is that we align ourselves to Industry 4 and Industry 5. So that is our benchmark and that is our kind of our, our direction. And we, as an organization, have been building IT strategies for the last 10 years. We have a clear roadmap uh, for the next three years in terms of what our investment would be, what are the priorities for digital transformation, security, innovation, and we are following those things. So, like new, th we are already on the AI ML path, and a uh, couple of solutions that I spoke, we have already implemented AI ML, and we are the early pioneers in the industry. And uh, I think industry four and industry five, we are somewhere at a uh, seventy fifth percentile, and so we have already started to look at industry five, which is the next benchmark or the global trend. And uh, we are trying to see that we'll be the early adopters of industry five. And when we do such things, I think this is where we want to be part of the blue ocean, where the customer would know and come to us, rather than we have to go to the customer. Great. I mean, yeah, I just heard uh, about or read about Industry 5. Definitely must have another discussion with you on this and more in detail. Uh, so, kind of Bupendra, would you like to uh, talk about uh, emerging technologies and how they can help you with uh, your customer-centric, uh, you know, apps that you are talking about? Yeah, as you did. This uh, industry is flooded with the solutions uh, and with the help of like AI, ML, AR, IoT, and then many, many other technology terms, RPA. So, but it is a difficult or it's a, a difficult task of CIO to align with the business uh, requirement. Okay. So, in that uh, uh, segment, what we are thinking, we are doing the POC for RPA, like TPA is a repetitive task of the in the hospital. Uh, so in that we are uh, doing the POC for RBA and IoT for home care solution like uh, patient is at home and then we want to uh, capture their vitals on time so that IoT will help to push the, their vitals to the hospital. So these two technology we are uh, uh, doing the POC and maybe come back with the I think three four months uh, with this uh, outcome. So we also uh, in this utilizing the technology emerging technology into our business needs and then uh, patient uh, centric uh, things. Great. Uh, finally, Balvinder, anything uh, you would like to add on? Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, we are already using uh, no AI and ML. I mean, in my couple of examples, I already shared that how we are using in in that. And in fact, uh, if I talk about IoT, yes, IoT, um, we are already integrating all our no uh, control panels with the IoT devices, which is without that, its stacking is not possible. So it's already uh, there in our system. Now the next edge, we have a contact center which is running a twenty-four by seven. And this, this I want to convert because with the emerging technology, if I talk about a 5G, which is coming there, and it's once it is no blue moon, instead of a blue moon to everyone, what is available to all, then when we, I wanted to transfer my contact center into onto the, that platform immediately. I want to see, I mean, currently my team, when they are talking to, they do a video call rather than you no know, talking over the phone. It gives more, uh, it gives a more, you no know, um, uh, personalized touch, I would say. To my customer as well as a much better experience uh, than uh, calling over the phone and no it gives a clarity i mean the, to the other person as well that whom they are talking about so i think this is my next goal in another six months i'm going to set up that that contact center a video contact center so that every time when the call would be reaching to the driver or reaching to my uh customers in it has to go as a video call and uh that that's that's give me another 
definitely it will increase my customer retainship as well as my profitability into the next level great i think i'm very happy hearing you know what's like profitability and customer sensitivity from from a cio uh, you know the it's so so do sir i started with that ki i am i am heading now two roles one is as a no, managing no, director no, for the trucks up and second yeah. is as cio and i think more or less if i talk about now it's no longer that cio is also t- involving in no uh, being uh, looking towards that how uh, instead of the cost cutting uh and uh, no because cio cannot go to the market and cannot no increase the uh, top line but definitely they can bring a interim solution in between so that cost cutting should not be done but some process can be aligned in between so that a cost benefit can be generated to the organization and today time is less else if i would have given you a great example about uh one of the diesel utilization in the route optimization we delivered almost 4 years back uh, which is saving around more than a 20 lakh rupees of every month saving on 4 crore rupee of a fuel buying to any i mean to any organization if i open because i this is my uh, this is my uh, uh, one of the uh, subject in in my doctorate research also i want first my paper to publish and then i can share that to the entire world that how i could have designed the system and in a federal uh, uh, in a federal uh, uh, government semi uh, quasi federal government and uh, where no you can save still save up to 20 25 lakh rupees a month on spending a 4 crore of fuel Great, I mean, great. I mean, it's, I'm really very happy. Uh, you know what I know uh, in my last few years as a CIO was that it's not that the CIOs and the IT department is now following the business strategy. You know, making a IT strategy which is in line with the business strategy. Nowadays, it's actually the other way around. The business strategy gets influenced a lot by what technology can. Do. So therefore, I think it's it's an integration of uh, the IT and business strategies into one, and there's no two different uh, strategies or. So I think in conclusion what I would like to say is yes uh, there is a huge focus towards customer centric solutions and a huge amount of innovation I'm uh, really impressed and uh, surprised in the type of work that you people are doing uh, in your companies uh, congratulations and I would like to thank you very much for a very interesting discussion thank you For more updates from CXO TV please like and subscribe to our channel